Welcome to our video, specially produced for Heritage Open Days 2020. The Sandhouse was a prominent feature in Doncaster, South Yorkshire, from the mid-1850s until the Second World War. The mansion-sized dwelling was carved from solid sandstone in a former quarry by Victorian businessman Henry Senior. As well as carving the house itself, Senior excavated into the adjacent ground creating an extensive network of tunnels, decorated with fine and unusual carvings. The sandhouse was partially demolished in the late 1930s, and the former quarry in which it stood was used for landfill. The tunnels were progressively infilled when they began to collapse. Most of the known tunnels were finally infilled in 1984. In this video we're going to take a look at present day photographs of the Sandhouse locality and compare them with historic images. These historic images are from both the early 20th century and also the 1960s when most of the terraced houses in the area were being demolished and the modern apartment blocks built in their place. All the photos in this video were taken within a quarter of a mile of the Sandhouse. We're going to start by travelling from Balby Bridge towards Doncaster Town Centre, following the blue arrows on this map. Near the bottom of the map, you'll see a red rectangle marking where the sand house used to stand. This modern photograph was taken at Balby Bridge, with the dual carriageway of Cleveland Street heading off to the left towards the town centre. The high rise block on the right is Silverwood House, marking the precise location where the sand house once stood. This photo, taken at exactly the same point as the previous one, shows the layout as it was up until the 1960s. Up to that time, St Sepulchre Gate ran all the way from the town centre to Bowlby Bridge, so that is the street that we can see heading to the left. Heading off to the right is St Swithin's Terrace, which gave access to Kellam Street and Green Dyke Lane. A short way along the dual carriageway towards the town centre, we can turn and look across the road. In the distance now we see Silverwood House, left of centre. Before the redevelopment, the view from here would have been straight up Ellsworth Street to Green Dyke Lane at the far end. The houses at the top of Hillsworth Street on the left backed on to the former quarry which housed the sand house. A little further towards town, the modern view is of more maisonette blocks. Once again, the site of the sand house is clearly marked by Silverwood House in the background. The previous view would have been straight up Albert Street, a cul de sac which ended just short of the sand house. A few yards on and the present day view hardly changes. However, until 1966 we would have been looking at the Alma Inn. The original Alma was built by Henry Senior back in the 1850s, but the building was reconstructed in 1933. Here is another view of the Alma after Albert Street had been demolished, and here is the equivalent modern view. The lane that ran to the left of the Alma Inn was called Burden Lane and it originally ran all the way through to Green Dyke Lane from St Sepulchre Gate. In the 1860s it was shortened after Henry Senior obtained permission to extend his quarry across its route. Here's a view taken from what remained of Burden Lane looking out across St Sepulchre Gate. The view today looks like this. This view of the Alma Inn was taken looking towards Bowlby Bridge. St Sepulchre Gate is on the extreme right and St James Street is heading off to the left. The same location looks like this today. Turning to look towards the town centre we can see the landmark of St James's Church. Previously we would have seen the Shakespeare's Head Hotel in the foreground at the junction of St Sepulchre Gate and St James Street. Even closer to the town centre we now see this. 
that we used to be able to see houses and shops with the Alma Inn in the distance heading up towards Bowlby Bridge beyond. At a very similar location but looking towards the town centre we used to have the YMCA building standing at the junction of St Sepulchre Gate and Cleveland Street. In the background you can see the crane showing signs of the redevelopment that was about to take place. And then soon after those shops on the right were demolished and we see now the high rise block of Sandbeck House under construction. The Corporation Brewery Tap public house can be seen to the left of Sandbeck House and that remains to this day although it's partially obscured by trees on this modern day equivalent photo. This 1963 photograph shows redevelopment well underway. We see the contrast between the old, the thatched house public house in this case, and some terraced houses, and the new in the form of Furbeck House and Cusworth House high-rise blocks. The dual carriageway of Cleveland Street cuts right through this area now. St James Street used to be one long straight road being an extension of Waterdale and ending at its junction with St Sepulchre Gate by the Shakespeare's Head. On this photograph redevelopment is well advanced to the left or north side of St James Street but some of the original terraced houses still remain on the opposite side. St James Street became a continuous circular route around the new estate. A car park stands on this part of its original route. Now we move closer to the sand house site to take a look at views where the two blue arrows are shown on this plan. The house used to face south towards Green Dyke Lane. Here we see the houses of Green Dyke Lane shortly before they were demolished in the early 1970s to make way for the dual carriageway of Car House Road. The wall of Hyde Park Cemetery can be seen on the right. The same location looks like this today. Opposite the cemetery at this point used to be Upper Oxford Street leading off Green Dyck Lane. Here we see it in 1935 showing the celebrations for King George V's Silver Jubilee. Much of this area is now open space although we can see Atlas Academy in the distance, formerly called Stirling Primary School. The sand house used to stand alongside Victoria Street. The yellow dotted lines on this map show the alignment of Victoria Street. Its northern end is now straddled by Lundwood House. Here's what that part of Victoria Street used to look like, with the junction with St James Street in the distance and the side of the Shakespeare's Head Hotel. The present day view is this. Turning to look south towards the Sandhouse site, we see the landmark of Silverwood House once again. Once the houses at the northern end of Victoria Street had been demolished in the early 1960s, it was possible to look across to what remained of Albert Street in the middle ground and Ellsworth Street in the background. Almost opposite the sand house on Victoria Street stood number 69, shown here in late 1967, just before it was demolished. Number 69 was the home of Henry Senior's daughter and son-in-law, Emma and William Hemingway. Because of a cavern that was dug out of the sandstone underneath the backyard of number 69, there is no building standing in that location now. Here we see Thurcroft House just to the right. Prior to its demolition the Hall family lived next door to the Hemingways at number 71 Victoria Street. Walter Hall was a keen amateur photographer. He took this photograph just across the road in 1964. Numbers 58 down to 34 Victoria Street were in the process of demolition. So now we've arrived back at the Sand House. This photograph was taken around the turn of the 20th century. Number 69 and 71 Victoria Street can be seen in the background towards the right hand side of the photo. 
in the middle background are the houses that we saw being demolished in the previous photo. The top of the roof of the sand house was almost on a level with Victoria Street. This slightly later photograph of the sand house shows a summer house in the corner between the front of the house and what was once the sandstone rock face of the quarry owned by Henry Senior. The house's roof was taken off around 1938 and anything that remains of the house now is buried several metres below the ground surface. Today's view across the site certainly would not suggest that anything unusual ever existed there. Here's a closer look at that summer house. The quarry floor became rather a nice garden. It was certainly more pleasant than the view we see today. Remember that the modern ground surface is several metres higher than the original quarry floor. This 1920s photograph clearly shows the height of the rock face. The wall at the top ran alongside the edge of Victoria Street. A present day photograph at the same location gives just a hint of the level difference that once existed. Here are two more views of that mature sand house garden. The modern view at the same spot, albeit a few metres higher, really doesn't compare. This is the view northwards from the back of the sand house. A narrow lane known at different times as Sandpit Lane and Albert Terrace ran from the back of the sand house through to St Sepulchre Gate, emerging at the right hand side of the Alma Inn. The Maisonette blocks of Orgreave House and Maltby House straddle where that lane used to run. Probably the best known feature of the sand house was its adjacent tunnel network that ran under the ground near to the quarry. Few people would realise that this is the view that you once had below ground at this point. Similarly, looking from the other direction, the view was equally stunning. Partway along this tunnel was the Sandhouse's most iconic feature, the Elephant and Mahout. The very first tunnel in this area actually predated the sand house and in fact inspired its creation. It was dug to facilitate a drainage scheme. A manhole outside the gate of Hyde Park Cemetery gives away some of the origins of this tunnel. The tunnel continues beneath the path in the cemetery for a distance of 80 metres and at a depth of no less than 6 metres. During the 1960s, the Sandhouse locality changed dramatically. The houses on the east side of Victoria Street were some of the very last to be demolished for redevelopment of the area. We see them in this 1966 photograph. In the foreground, is Ellsworth Street with no houses still standing and in between the caravans are standing on the land previously occupied by the sand house. In the distance we see St James's Church and then to its right the high rise blocks of Cusworth House, Furbeck House and Sandbeck House. Today the view from the same spot is this. This similar 1966 shot was taken a little closer to Victoria Street, looking directly across the land formerly occupied by the sand house. In the distance we can see the back of the Alma Inn, just left of centre. The present day view looks like this. Walter Hall's photographs provide a wonderful social history of the area during the 1960s. This one, taken from the front window of his home at 71 Victoria Street, shows his son and a friend playing in the street. In the distance we can see the rear of the Alma Inn in the centre of the shot. 
The view from the same place today looks like this. This time it's football that's being played in Victoria Street. In the distance the pale building at the far end of Victoria Street across the road at the junction with St James Street is the Shakespeare's Head Hotel. This 1965 photo was taken from the upstairs front window of 71 Victoria Street. The caravans are standing on land that was formerly to the rear of the sand house. The car in the bottom right hand corner stands where number 58 Victoria Street had previously been. From the same vantage point we can look across and see that Albert Street has now gone and Ellsworth Street is in the process of being demolished. The white caravan on the left stands almost exactly where the sand house used to be. The modern view from that location looking in that direction is this. Also taken from the upstairs window of number 71 Victoria Street, this shot is looking towards Bobby Bridge. On the horizon at the left of the photograph is the Vine Hotel. Just to its right is the water tank of the former railway depot alongside Bobby Bridge and to the right of that a few houses still standing on Floor Street. By early 1967 those Floor Street houses had gone and by the end of that year construction work had begun on Silverwood House and its surrounding maisonette blocks. The present day view in the same direction looks like this. Still taken from the upstairs window of number 71 Victoria Street, this 1966 photograph is looking towards St Sepulchre Gate. Once again the Alma Inn features, the rear of it can be seen just to the right of centre. And to the left of that on the horizon can be seen the ice works in Hexthorpe. The Alma was demolished in 1966 and a year later construction work had begun on the maize net blocks on what were to become Bond Close and Burden Close. Looking in that same direction now this is the view. The dual carriageway that runs in between the Sandhouse site and Hyde Park Cemetery was built in the mid 1970s. At the time two access shafts were sunk for the purposes of gaining access to the tunnels ready for filling in the section beneath the road. Here a local newspaper reporter is preparing to take a look underground. By 1983 after a series of collapses the decision was taken to fill in most of what remained of the tunnel network. In early 1984 an access shaft was sunk in the corner of Silverwood House car park across the road from Thurcroft House. One of the people who was allowed to go down into the tunnels was a great granddaughter of Henry Senior, the Sandhouse's creator. Your narrator was also allowed to visit at that time. Within days of those underground visits taking place hundreds of tons of a fly ash and cement grout were poured into the tunnels to seal them up forever. This is one view that has barely changed in the past 50 years. The family homes of the Hemingways and the Halls at 69 and 71 Victoria Street respectively used to stand in the gap between the two maize net blocks on the left of this photograph. As Walter Hall's photographic record from the 1960s has formed such a significant part of this sand house then and now story it seems only right that we should see the man himself on a photo. Here he is pictured in the rear garden of 71 Victoria Street in 1962 with his wife Teresa. The houses of Stirling Street are in the background. At the same spot in 2020 this is what we see. 
So let us end by returning to the spot where the sand house once stood and taking another look at the view that we would have had a century ago. For more information about the sand house, please visit www.thesandhouse.org.uk where you will also find links to our social media channels. We would also be most grateful if you would provide feedback by visiting heritageopendays.org.uk slash visiting slash survey. Thank you.